Is the COVID-19 vaccine safe for everyone? Plus, what should I expect if I get it? We speak to someone who got the vaccine. Hey, Deep Divers, I'm Lisa B for Health. And before we talk about the COVID-19 vaccine, click the subscribe button, give this video a like, and click the bell button to be notified each time we upload a new video. Now, the US has not one, but two COVID-19 vaccines. This is huge for science because this all happened in under a year. One is Pfizer's vaccine, which was approved for people as young as 16 years old. And the other is Moderna's vaccine, which was approved for people 18 and up. As of this recording, both are being given to the CDC's first round priority group. That includes healthcare workers and those who work and live in long-term care facilities. Each state gets to determine its own vaccine distribution, though the CDC has published recommendations. But since this all happened so fast, how do we know if it's safe? Well, the CDC ensures all vaccines are as safe as possible and keeps a U.S. vaccine safety system. Data from clinical trials also show the potential benefits of the vaccine outweighed the known and potential harms of coming down with COVID-19. And speaking of the clinical trials, Dr. Megan Rainey has told us researchers track vaccine participants' health throughout the trial. Anytime they get sick, hospitalized, or even die, experts investigate whether it had any possible ties to the vaccine. But it's important to note, safe doesn't mean zero side effects. Dr. Rainey says a vaccine is considered safe when it doesn't cause serious adverse events. She says, quote, an unsafe vaccine is one that causes permanent or serious harm, things that change the course of a person's life. So what can you expect after getting the COVID-19 vaccine? The CDC says common side effects include pain or swelling on the arm where you got the shot. And throughout the rest of your body, you can experience a fever, chills, tiredness, or a headache. But doctors say that's a small price to pay to potentially avoid COVID-19's more serious symptoms and risks. All right, so should anyone not get the vaccine? Clinical trials for both vaccines excluded children, people who are pregnant, or who are breastfeeding, though that's not uncommon. Dr. Rainey says, quote, pregnant people and children are considered vulnerable populations. Also, the vaccines weren't specifically tested on immunocompromised people or on those who are on immunosuppressants. Dr. Rainey says, quote, you worry that they're not able to mount as good of an immune response, so testing the vaccine in them is going to show less effect of the vaccine than you would expect. But it's really up to those people and their doctors if they want the vaccine. Pfizer actually included 120 people with HIV, and Moderna included 176 people with HIV in their trials. Now, if you have a history of severe allergic reactions, listen up. As of this recording, the CDC urges people who had severe allergic reactions to any ingredients in either COVID-19 vaccine not to get it. They're the only group the CDC has made this type of recommendation for. If you had severe allergic reactions not related to vaccines in the past, the CDC still urges you to get the vaccine. But you'll want to be monitored by a medical professional who has access to emergency medications. This all comes after a handful of allergic reactions have been reported in the UK and the US. So to wrap things up, Dr. Rainey says, quote, there's no reason to believe that either COVID-19 vaccine would be unsafe, as in cause severe harm for the large majority of people, including any groups who are left out of clinical trials. But researchers haven't collected enough data yet to be able to issue a sweeping statement one way or another. Now let's talk to someone who got the COVID-19 vaccine. Meet Katie Rotolo. Katie, thank you for joining us. Tell us, what was your experience like getting the vaccine? My experience was really pleasant. You know, it was actually pretty, I won't say painless, but not super painful. I think it was less painful. I had the flu shot and the tetanus shot together not too long ago. and. Um, it was definitely less painful than that, and I got both of those at the same time. It was funny, actually, my husband was taking a picture, and it was kind of before I knew it, the shot was done, and I was like, wait, did you take a picture? Um, yeah, so far, so good. I feel good about it. I'm excited to get my second one. I do hear that it's a little more painful, potentially, or you know, different side effects, but I felt fine after the first one, and you know, they made me wait a few minutes to make sure I was okay. I felt fine, I went straight to work that day, really excitedly, 
And uh, my husband joked about how long I left the Band-Aid on. <laughs> I think I was just excited. Like, it was on all day. And he just took his off right away. So you didn't have any immediate side effects after getting the shot? Personally, no. I mean, I had tenderness, you know? I mean, it's it's definitely not, you know, super, you know, fun. It feels like you got punched in the arm. But nothing crazy, really just like muscle soreness for a couple of days. I think about three days I was sore for nothing else that really felt like it affected me that I could think of. Well, thank you for sharing all of this with us and we really appreciate it. You know, if you still have any questions about the COVID-19 vaccine, it's best to speak to your doctor. Let us know in the comments below if you plan on getting the shot or if you already had. Bye guys.